G'day and welcome to the show. This week we head from Melbourne to Ballarat and as you can see, I've got a new travel buddy. Welcome Steve Hayden. Thank you Angie. Yeah, I'm very excited to be part of the Down Under team. Are you a little bit nervous because we're a crazy bunch? I've heard that, but you know what, I'm a big boy. <laughs> You'll need to be. <laughs> now this episode's brought to you by the Caravan Industry Association Victoria. And we'll have Daniel Solberg with us again from Melbourne, giving us all our caravanning tips. And we're lucky enough to have some lovely association members with us for the ride. So stick around as we show you what's, what's up, up down, down under. under. It's tough to see this land, this land of wonder. It's time to go and see what's up down under. This episode we begin in Melbourne, Victoria and we'll end up in the gold fields of Ballarat. Leading the way are association members from Hayland Vans in their Bathurst and also from the association is Graham Jenkins representing Centaur Products in the Caravan A. Caravanning isn't as easy as driving a normal vehicle like we're doing right now even though the manufacturers from the association do their best to design the safest caravans it's it's always good to have a bit of knowledge to go with it. Absolutely. We've got Daniel Solberg back in Melbourne, standing by ready to give us some handy and informative caravanning tips. Over to you, Daniel. Thanks, Steve and Angie. Now, I'm here today to talk about electrical safety. We've got Greg Johnson from Energy Safe Victoria to talk about the pre-checks before you use your caravan. Every caravan is required to have a safety switch installed on its incoming supply. This should be tested prior to using your van and ideally before you go on your holiday. You do that by operating the test button that's located on the circuit breaker safety switch. Another important tip is aftermarket accessories. You've got your speakers and your annexes that are fitted to a caravan. Now why is that important, Greg? Daniel, no one knows where the cables are run through your caravan. The walls are very thin and you really need to get your manufacturer to provide you with that guidance on where you can install that equipment. Yeah, and Energy Safe have got an important message out at the moment, don't they? Yeah, DIY die. We've had a few fatalities recently from people doing their own work. So that's an important tip, guys. If you want to find out any more information, head to gomakesomememories.com.au and now back to Steve and Angie on The Convoy. Daniel has heaps to share and he'll be back later in the show. But right now, we're taking in the sights and heading to Ballarat. The drive from Melbourne to Ballarat is such a, it's a great road, so it's really easy if you're towing a caravan. And it's scenic as well. There's a few rolling hills along the way and, um, Really good if you've got some great company with you. So yeah, I had Steve hanging out with me and we got to chew the fat. Who do you vote for? Richmond. Right. Um, yeah, I don't really follow footy. It didn't matter that we didn't talk about footy because we arrived in Ballarat and the Ballarat Goldfields Holiday Park. We checked into the Goldfields Caravan Park, which is just across the road from Sovereign Hill. So it's such an awesome place. If you're coming here as a tourist and you want to see the main sites, it's the perfect place to stay. Whilst we were organising our cabins, the association members were busy setting up their camp for the stay here in Ballarat. so easy to adjust. Welcome to Goldfields Holiday Park. Hey Graham, how are you settling in? Settling in well. I'll tell you what, this Centaur Caravana is pretty slick looking, isn't it? And it's a good band. Um, this is the Caravane in the Centaur range. It's absolutely beautiful. What would the key features be of this van? The key features of the van are it's lightweight, mm -hmm. it's very sturdy, and inside it's got a good utilisation of space. Now you've come along with us as an association member with the Victorian caravan industry. What would you say the benefits are of being a member? 
Well, firstly, there's the shows that we go to, which is very good for us to display our products. And also, it allows us to show to quite an array of customers as well yeah. in, in the country and the city areas. That's great. And, and what about the benefits to the consumer when you are an association member? Well, when we were an association, they got the peace of mind that we adhere to all their ethics, code of ethics and so forth. Now, if people want to know more about your caravans or products, where can they find you? It's best to Google Centaur Products Australia and you'll see on there both our models and all the options that are available with them. Well, thanks, Graham. It's great thanks. to have you on board. Thanks very much, Angie. <laughs> Doing business with association members like Centaur Products gives you peace of mind because they operate under a specific code of ethics to ensure a positive customer experience. You can find a list of association members by logging on to gomakesomememories.com.au. Keep watching because on today's show, Daniel Solberg will join us with some more caravanning tips. We try our hand at portrait painting. And we learn the history of the Eureka Rebellion through sound and light. Our Scottish friends this week lost a good man. But up next, I catch up with my old mate, Steve Monaghetti, who shows us there's still plenty of gold in Ballarat. We're lucky to be guests of the Watts family here at the Ballarat Goldfields Holiday Park. Here's Angie with one of the family members to tell us all about it. Now, Sandra, you're part of the famous Watts family. Now, they're big in the caravan world because you've got Coburg, Renmark, and this one in Ballarat. Yes. <laughs> and all the parks that the Watts put their hands on turn to gold. They're all pristine. They're all absolutely beautiful. The, the service is always fantastic. What do you think the best thing is about this place? Oh, the location here is magnificent. You can walk to Sovereign Hill, walk to the local restaurants. It's at your fingertips, yeah. isn't it? And there's so much for the whole family to do. Like you've got this magnificent pool. What You've got a new um, playground yeah, area. Yeah, the indoor playground. Yeah, yes, yeah the kids love that. So you've got plenty of sites. Yes, we've got uh, powered sites, uh, dry food sites and ensuite sites. Yep. And cabins of all descriptions. Yes, uh, ranging from studio one, two and three bedroom yes. deluxe holiday units. So. Somehow I ended up in a three bedroom deluxe holiday unit on my own. <laughs> it feels a bit luxurious. <laughs> And you've got a function space? Yes, we've got a function room, so we cater for all groups, uh, probus clubs, caravan clubs, school groups, um, where we have a caterer and they can come in and cater, and it just makes it so much easier. What's up, Down Under? So if anyone wants to come and visit you or and stay at your magnificent park or any of the others, where should they Google? Just Google What's Holiday Parks Australia, and then all of our three parks will just appear. What's Holiday Parks Australia? And that's W A T S. That's correct. Very good. Thank you. That you were great. excellent. <laughs> uh, hi, Steve. See you admiring the Caravano by Centaur. It's a nice looking rig, Terry. They're a great uh, caravan. Uh, I've got a car camper made by the same people. And the history is uh, they're rich in boat builders. Speaking of local history, Angie's in Main Street, Ballarat, right now with the one and only Steve Monaghetti. I popped into L'Espresso, one of Ballarat's trendy cafes, which is apparently a favourite of Steve Monaghetti. Hello there, Steve. Hi, Angie. How, how are, are you? you? Good to see you. Lovely to see you. I don't too. think I've seen you since our wedding or something, have I? Well, you haven't changed a bit. Oh, either of you. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer by you. Yeah. Now, you brought me to a very special looking cafe. Is yes. this one of your faves? It is one of the, well, not only one of my faves, it's an institution in Ballarat. It? It's, uh, it was probably ahead of the game, you know, they always hear it. Black Swan Records, it was initially, started out as a really? record store. And it's the records all around the place. It's now sort of moved into the coffee vibe and they were ahead of the game. Game on, on realising that coffee culture was pretty strong. How good is this Great coffee? Great coffee, oh really. Oh my goodness. Always good quality. You never, never mm. miss here. Now this gorgeous town of Ballarat, you know it inside out. And now I feel like there is a bit of a surge of, of new restaurants and cafes. And what? How would you s explain what's going on here? Yeah, it seems to have be been a real transformation. In, you know, it was a little bit of a sleepy hollow, but food and wine and just the experience of coming to Ballarat to enjoy, to embrace it, it's really booming at the moment. What are some of your favourites? Some of the Forge has been a, 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 you know, taking pizzas to another level. You know, we often pop down to Craig's, you know, great, great architecture, but also, you know, really quality 
produce. Well, I can't imagine you ever slowing down, so I want to see you running at 80. Yeah, well, <laughs> slowing down gracefully. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Sounds good, Angie. <Andrew. laughs> so good to catch up with you again. We need to do it again in the next we 10 do. years. <laughs> sooner, sooner rather than later. Now, we've got a new host on the show. His name's Steve as well, and I was hoping that I could set him up to get you to take him to a bit of a workout. Maybe around my track at I the hype. I love it. So keep watching because later in the show, our Steve picks up the pace. And if you'd like to see my full interview with Steve Monaghetti, just log on to whatsupdownunder.com.au and follow the links. Coming up after the break, you visit Ballarat Art Gallery and then take a trip to the Blood on the Southern Cross Sound and Light Show. Angie here, just letting you know today's episode was made possible by our partners at the Caravan Industry Association Victoria, helping you go make some memories. And also here to help is Daniel Salberg with another great caravan tip. For our next tip, we've got John Simmons here from Thetford to talk about one of the most important things about a caravan. Yes, Daniel, the toilet facilities are very important of the person's holiday. And behind this little door here, we have the business end of things. Before you can use the toilet inside, we need to prep the tank from the outside. So here's your cassette, drop your sachet in, or your measure of additives, three litres of water, and you're ready to go. So how do you know when the canister's full, John? Well, inside on the control panel is a red indicator light that will light up when it's ready for emptying. You take the cassette out, turn the spout, press the vent button and empty into the designated dump point. So one of the other great things I've learnt about Thetford, John, is if you buy a used caravan, you've obviously got a used toilet. So what you can buy from your outlet stores or online is a fresh upset and then you're ready to go. Now if you want to find any information about this tip or any other tips, head to gomakesomememories.com.au. Thanks, Daniel, and thanks for another great tip. Yes, here we are at the Ballarat Art Gallery. And this place is not only known for its incredible artwork, but also the amazing architecture. Built in 1884, it's spectacular. Shall we go and have a look? I think so. The Ballarat Art Gallery is so beautiful. The building itself is incredible, and then these pieces of art just blow your mind. The size of some of those paintings, and I think I mentioned to Angie, you know, there were no photographs back there, so that's coming from people's images, you know, from 100, 150 years ago. Beck and Jason from Halen Vance took an interest in one of the many sculptures. And one particular portrait caught our eye. Have a look at the detail in this. It's called the Masquerader. Do you think you could replicate that? Yeah, yeah, I think I could give it a go. <laughs> that's confidence. <laughs> And Alison took us through a class of, of how to paint a portrait. She gave us a few tips at the start and we had the beautiful Merin posing for us. And um, yeah, Steve and I had a crack. Alison was amazing, like a great art teacher. Like I don't have a lot of skill in that area, but she made me feel like I can do it. And she sort of really made me realise that everybody can do some form of artwork if you put your mind to it. Angie and Steve, wow, look what you've created. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, Alison, thank you for showing us through this magnificent gallery and for letting us express our creative talent. You know, Angie, I feel like I've had a win today. Yes, you're right. And if you want to win too, check out our competitions either online or on today's show, like this one. What's up down under have teamed up with the Caravan Industry Association of Victoria, Go Make Some Memories and New Age Caravans to help you get your gecko on. New Age Caravans are giving you the chance to win a brand new gecko caravan valued at over $50,000. The gecko from New Age has a lightweight and compact design, which means you can still enjoy all the comforts on the road without taking up too much space. The gecko features the tough Elko Enduro suspension, external speakers, 15 inch alloy wheels and plenty more so that you can travel in comfort anywhere. Win the caravan and our mates at Camac are also giving away a $1,000 gift voucher. There are also plenty of monthly prizes to be won, including six $500 Kamek vouchers and six Family Parks vouchers valued at over $150 each. You can enter every day of the competition and all you have to do is log on to whatsupdownunder.com.au. Click on our competitions page and follow the prompts. So get your new age gecko on and go make some memories. Enter now. 
Now everybody knows that when you're in Ballarat you have to visit Sovereign Hill. But have you seen Blood on the Southern Cross, the sound and light show? We're lucky enough to be seeing it tonight. We're also lucky enough to have Peter Lawler straight from the 1850s. What was your involvement, Peter? Um, I tried to keep tensions down between the diggers at the time and the government, just to, because there was a lot of rules imposed. We didn't like them, but something had to be done. I was appointed a figurehead and tried to quell the tensions as best I could. Well, history says that you did a pretty good job of that. I think we should go and see the show. What do you think? Excellent. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Peter. Our guides led us to one of the Sovereign Hill mining camps where the story of the Eureka Rebellion began. And then we boarded a trolley to the main theatre where the battle took place. It's so dramatic and you're, you're standing out in the elements and it's cold but you rug up for it. He warns of imminent danger. The diggers intend for us to appear the aggressors. You'll see a, a tent light up and you'll hear a voice talking from it telling the story and then another tent light up and it feels like there's really actors there but it's purely voices, sound and light. Lieutenant Broadhurst and a detachment of the 14th Regiment arrive. They're lined up on the right of the building. I shouldn't spoil it for anyone, but, but the pub catches on fire. <laughs> the flag of the Southern Cross. It is an emblem around which the diggers can now rally. To have that narration and recap on some of Australian history and the Eureka Rebellion was, was incredible. The show ends in the streets of Sovereign Hill and a rousing speech by Peter Lawler himself. May God bless you all and I bid you all a good night. Wow, that was awesome. It sure was. I learned so much about Eureka Rebellion. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty big on the kids back, that's for sure. Absolutely. Now you need an early night, my friend. You've got to get back to the Goldfields Holiday Park because I've got a surprise for you. In the morning, you get to work out with former Olympian Steve Monaghetti. Wow, that's scary. <laughs> I thought you'd be excited. Well, it's going to be tough. <laughs> there are many caravan brands that are built on a GNS chassis, and GNS chassis want to support caravanners with a chance to win five thousand dollars or five thousand dollars off your next caravan purchase with a participating manufacturer. So, for information on how to enter and get 100 bonus entries, go to whatsupdownunder.com.au and click on our competitions page. Request the best with GNS. Thinking about selling your caravan? Log on to Caravan Camping Classifieds. With a fixed price of only $25 per listing and thousands of visits to the site each year, you're bound to say goodbye to your old van quicker than you think. There's great tips and hints and it's a no-fuss way of selling your van. And you may even find your new van on Caravan Camping Classified. I'm here with one of my sporting heroes, Steve Monaghetti. How are you, Steve? Good, Steve. How are That's you, That's good. Now, Angie sent me over here for you to put me through the hoops a little bit. Um, look, I do a bit of personal training. I'm not a great runner. Have you got any tips for me, Steve? Well, running's a quite a specific task, so you probably need to do some running, but take it very slowly as, a, you know, it's a bit of a warm-up, a natural warm-up, I always say. And this is a regular run that you do, obviously, the track's named after Steve. <laughs> yeah, born and bred just on the other side of the lake, and most of my running's done around here, so it's a very, very comfortable and homely environment for me, that's for sure, Steve. May not be for you, but it is for me. Okay, should we get started? We should, let's, let's go. go. Growing up, Steve Monaghetti was the guy that, you know, I grew up with and, you know, I always looked up to him as a legend of the sport of marathon running, but what a great guy and marathon running certainly not taught in schools. Then we only went up to 1,500 metres. During our run, Steve gave me some insight on how he became Australia's most famous marathoner. So I guess it would have started out as like 1,500 metres. Yes. And then as you got a bit older, did it move up to 5,000? Yeah, that's right, exactly. And then 10K, and that's what I made my first team as. So, you know, I just transitioned into being a marathon runner over the years by just absorbing years of training. His story isn't one of instant success, though, and a lesson for young athletes just starting out. When you're a youngster and you first went to Little Athletics, 
that the coach told your father that maybe this guy's not up to it. Yeah, and he, there was nothing wrong with that. You know, it was only a little fella, and distance running is not a, you know, not something you do a lot of little A's. So that's true, and I wasn't good at a lot of the sprinting and the throws and that, but yeah, so I wasn't. But anyway, I turned out okay. You turned out all right, mate, that's for sure. Even with his Olympic and Commonwealth Games success, Steve's most important legacy is seeing others challenge themselves in the sport of running. People are talking about 100k trail events and it's All great right. to see that people are wanting, you know, they're enjoying their recreational running so much that they, they want to see the next challenge or do something different off-road, on-road, longer. I was in awe of this champion and what a privilege it was spending time running with one of Ballarat's finest. Look, it feels like I ran a marathon. <laughs> well, not quite a marathon, but we've got a bit of good work covered. How's this technique? Average. <laughs> <laughs> Look, first of all, Steve, thank you so much for showing a slice of your hometown in Ballarat. And thank you to you guys for joining us, the association members. Also, a big thank you to the Caravan Industry Association of Victoria for making this all possible. Next time, we head to Holes Gap. So <laughs> stick with us. When we show you what's, what's up, up down there? under. Mark your calendar as What's Up Down Under returns to Network 10 on Saturday, July 22nd. Until then, look for our encore presentations on 1HD and 10 Play. And you can always find past episodes and other great content on our website by logging on to whatsupdownunder.com.au. And if you love caravanning and want to keep up with the latest news and information, log on to caravanindustrynews.com.au. You'll find everything on products, holiday parks and caravan associations. What's up down under?